Hello students, in our next video we are finally going to move beyond looking at DNA and cell and molecular biology to look at the effects of the phenotypic differences we see in species on the planet. So over generations, each generation of alleles that is most productive contributes the most alleles to the next generation. So this is what survival of the fittest is all about. Um, so if you leave more genes in the next generation, then your phenotypic variation will be more um, abundant in the next generation, and then those offspring will potentially have more offspring or different environmental effects will change um, what phenotypic expression is favorable, and therefore the gene pool shifts from generation to generation based on the environmental variability and based on the um, surviving alleles in the population before. We are going to look at this in several ways. <clears throat> so here are a few articles that you can read to get started. Um, there's this interesting lecture if you want to get really to the foundation of the research. Rosemary and Peter Grant are researchers at Stanford, and they have been bringing students to the Galapagos Islands where Darwin first conceived of natural selection for decades. And so their uh, data set is one of many that indicate that uh, evolution is happening and it doesn't happen necessarily slowly, it can happen very quickly. And in light of climate change, we expect that it would change even faster, the rate will continue to increase. So here we have our lecture. Um, you learn more about Darwin. And I think it's interesting to take a stop and look at Darwin's note taking. So like this is a page in his journal. Um, and it's pretty amazing, like if you think about, we keep emphasizing models, you know, so here he is developing a model, and right now it's just in his brain, and it doesn't have numbers to go along with it. Um, but if you want to see more pages of his journal, you can click here. So in this lab, we will ask ourselves specific questions to ponder um, the specific work of Darwin, regarding finches in the follow-up work of the grants. Why do finches have different kinds of beaks? And why do finches live in different parts of a tree? And why do some finches eat seeds while others eat insects, while still others are omnivores? How can it be that multiple species of finches could live in the same place at the same time? So we're going to be looking at the actual species that have been studied for a very long time now, over a hundred years, um, to ascertain for ourselves the evolutionary effects, the outcomes of phenotypic variation. So you will use um, the Cornell Lab of Ornithology to collect data, in the, or the darwinfoundation.org data zone checklist. Um, and as you move through that website, you're going to look for at least 10 birds, and this is your data collection effort. You're going to record the common name, the habitat, the description of the beak, food source, and an image. You might not find all the data on one website, but you could just take the name, select the name, and ask Google about that. And if you say, uh, select the Latin name, and then you write site colon dot edu, you will arrive at academic references. <clears throat> so, as we've been doing all along, you'll develop a table to collect this data, um, and then you will transform that data. So, when you just collect the information, that's called raw data. But then, once you transform it in some way, even with just an average, for example, um, now you have transformed data that uh, represents analysis of that data, and this belongs in your results section of any lab report. So, for example, after you've categorized them by species, you can then load them up into these bins um, and start to see how many species fit into these environmental parameters. Here's another table that you can look at build type. Here's habitat. So as we go on, it's a gradual release of responsibility. You design the tables. 
Um, and then we will write an essay to synthesize this. So it's similar to a uh, results or a lab report, but uh, realize that we're collecting qualitative data here, not quantitative data. Um, you're collecting information about the bird types, but not numeric information. You could transform numeric information in your results, for example, by looking at how many of the birds, of all the birds in total, have each kind of bill, just for example. Um, and then this right here, the reason why we're working on writing in this lab is because we will write a final paper in this course. And come November, we'll start to talk about that more. So this is a practice for that writing adventure. All right, I hope this was helpful and please let me know if you have questions.